Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, Nick said that mic is loud. They were not kidding. Hello. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, good morning and welcome home to First Christian Church of Decatur. Uh, my name is Daniel Brower. I'm the associate pastor. And we thank you for joining us this morning, either in person or virtually, for the very first service of 2023. Woo! Woo! We made it. <laughs> um, I don't have a formal theme to share with you this morning because this service is our annual Lessons and Carols service. We're doing this in tandem with Gentle Spirit Church, and we are so glad to have Pastor Paul and them here with us today. Um, so please... Uh, Enter into this space with a worshipful and joyful heart, seeking to hear the Christmas message once again to bring us into the new year. Let's worship together. Enthusiastic that time. Good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> uh, welcome once again to First Christian Church of Decatur. I know I, did, I know I just said that, but I never get tired of saying that. <laughs> welcome home. I am going to read our welcome statement. We read this at the top of every service because it is that important to us, especially coming into a new year. We want to ring it in right. So if you'd like to follow along, it's on the back of your bulletin. First Christian Church of Decatur, Disciples of Christ, is an open and affirming congregation. We welcome everyone into full participation in the life and membership of the church. Inspired and informed by God's love, mercy, and justice, we are purposefully involved in the healing and helping of our community and our world. We covenant with God and the greater community to nurture a spirit of love and service to neighbors, to honor one another's differences, 
and fellowship in the breaking of bread. Actively striving to honor each other's race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, physical or mental ability, family configuration, political affiliation, economic circumstance, or theological perspective, we truly welcome all. Just a couple of quick announcements before we jump into the service today. Um, Chalice Thrift has been closed for the holiday season, but they will reopen um, and begin keeping their usual Thursdays and Saturdays on the 7th of January. So Saturday the 7th, Chalice Thrift will reopen and be back to the full normal swing of things. Um, <coughs> Saturday, January 14th, they're uh, doing something with somebody and I don't know. <laughs> it's my ordination. <laughs> um, um, it's kind of at a weird hour. It's 11 a.m. on a Saturday, but if you can make it, I would really enjoy seeing you there. Um, and I want to say again, thank you to the church for placing the faith in me to credential me as a real person. <laughs> Um, if you're on the church board, the retreat's going to be on the 16th, so be on the lookout for more info on that from Millie. If you've been looking to get into the handbell choir, and I know you all are, uh, the handbell rehearsal starts up again on the 18th. Uh, and then I think that's the last of the super relevant soon announcements. Um, <clears throat> yes, William. Uh, next Saturday. Oh, geez. Wow. That's going to catch up with me a bunch. But yes, um, Saturday the 7th, what time? 10. 10. To take down all of the beautiful sanctuary Christmas decorations. Um, and one final thing, again, we have uh, Gentle Spirit Church worshiping in tandem with us today. If you have offerings for First Christian Church of Decatur, we have baskets in the back and in the sides and the box right here. If you have offering for Gentle Spirit, they're in the front row. Um, and I think that's it, unless anybody has anything else. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, that too. Go frogs, go dogs. Um, <laughs> so let's get started. Our first hymn today is Hail to the Lord's Anointed, and I don't remember what number. 140. 140. Two frogs.
Beloved in Christ, with delight we prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and go heart and mind to Bethlehem. Let us listen to the story of God's loving purpose, which traces God's saving acts from humanity's first disobedience down to the glorious redemption brought to all by this holy child. And let us make the hallowed walls reverberate with the glad tidings of great joy, which is to all people. Let us pray. Magnificent and merciful God, we come to worship you this morning at the close of one year and the threshold of a new one. Our faithfulness in the year behind has not been all that we wished it to be, and we know the road ahead of us holds many new challenges and opportunities to be followers you desire. Help us resolve to be the disciples of Christ that you desire for the world, full of compassion, mercy, and loving kindness, singing in harmony with the rest of creation. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Chapter 3, God declares the blessedness of all creation. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, mm. and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity 
between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And now verses 1 and 2 of him, Come along, expected Jesus, found on page 125. second lesson, a reading from Genesis chapter 22. God promises to faithful Abraham that by his offspring the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you have obeyed my voice. Now verses 1 and 4 of him, O come, O come, Emmanuel, found on page 119. <laughs>
reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet, chapter 60. The darkness is dispelled by the coming of the light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. And now him. 144 verses 1 and 4, O little town of Bethlehem. fourth lesson, a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. The angel Gabriel visits the Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Friends, the 
The fifth lesson, a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew tells of Christ's holy birth. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. Hymn 162, verses 1 and 3, What Child Is This? <laughs>
the sixth lesson. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Then one hundred and fifty. seventh lesson, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 2. The shepherds go to the manger. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Hymn number 151, the first Noel.
the eighth lesson reading from the gospel of matthew chapter two the wise men are led by the star in the time of king herod after jesus was born in bethlehem of judea wise men from the east came to jerusalem asking where is the child who has been born king of the jews for we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and they paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and money. lesson, a reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. 
and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Sitting for a minute. <laughs> and I just messed the room up. <clears throat> it's just because I figure if I sit, then I'll talk shorter. Amen. I was <laughs> hey, I was I was telling somebody um, before the start of the service that it is such an honor um, and a privilege to be able to come and share with First Christian Church of Decatur. Um, <laughs> and I told him, I said, and, and James didn't even know I was preaching this morning. Um, and so he doesn't know, uh, he does know how long I can go, right? Uh, which, so it's good that he didn't know I was preaching. Anyway, with that said, this is only 40, 50 minutes, okay? Amen, there you go. You'll be hungry by the time this is done. All right, uh, I also heard somebody um, make a remark about the title of the sermon this morning, the message, and uh, that's because we all have pig pens. Amen? We all do, if we stop and think about it. My husband has a drawer, actually he has three drawers in the house, that if you can't find it anywhere else, look in those drawers. Amen? There are some of you, I'm sure, that have a closet. That if you've got something that you don't know what to do with it, it goes in that closet. And you know what's really nice about that closet? You can close the door. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. And we all, well not all of us, some of us, 
have a garage. Good Lord. Amen. Garages, folks. I see, I'm stuck. Garages, folks, were meant for cars. I've been in some of y'all's garages. Car doesn't fit in the garage anymore. It doesn't in our house, anyway. So with that in mind, would you pray with me? Almighty God, I come to you now as your servant, asking that the words that I speak this morning would not be mine, but they would be yours. And asking, O oh God, that those who hear and receive these words would receive them in their minds and in their hearts, but deep in their souls, O oh God. That place where only you and they go. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit, that I would do your will, and not my own. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. So today's message about this inventory comes from the 15th chapter of Luke, beginning with the 11th verse. And we're just going to kind of move through this um, until I get tired. Okay? But there is, there is some, this is just the most critical story in all of Scripture. I will set it up that way so that you know. There is no other story that Jesus tells that is more important to us as a people of faith. Because Jesus makes it very clear in this story what God expects of us and what God wants. Because you see, this story in Luke gets set up because Jesus has spent some time telling people what God is like. And you know, all of us sitting here, we've just gone through four weeks of Advent. We've heard a variety of opinions about what the birth was all about. We even heard about the virgin birth this morning. Amen. You know, we heard, and, I, and I'm sorry, folks, I just kind of chuckle because I grew up in a church where if you were pregnant and you weren't married, <laughs> hello? Yeah, that was a lot of trouble. And yet we read that verse this morning as if it was just nothing. <laughs> She's engaged and with child. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm telling you, there is no better story for us to begin the year with than this one that I'm about to share with you. And then Jesus said there was once a person who had two children. And the younger one said to the parents, I want what is mine right now. I want what's coming to me. And so the parent divided the property between them. And it wasn't long before the younger one packed their bags and left for a distant country. Now, I want you to visualize this because this story is also good for where we live here in the land of Georgia, okay? This story starts in Vidalia. And the kid leaves for Atlanta. Amen? You got that? And has anybody here been to Vidalia? I went through Vidalia once. It is the perfect town to talk about. There's nothing there. <laughs> except farms and onions. <laughs> okay. And so, so the kid left Vidalia and he comes to Atlanta. And when he got to Atlanta, there, undisciplined and dissipated, the child wasted everything that they had been given. Everything. And after they had gone through the money, there was a bad famine. Folks, if you want to put this in today's way of thinking, just put COVID-19 in place of famine. Or put HIV in place of famine. Or put real estate in the place of famine. Or put cancer in the place of famine.
he began to feel it. He signed on with some citizen there who assigned this child to work in the fields, so much for the allure of Atlanta, going back out to the fields and to slop the pigs. At one point, becoming so hungry, they would have eaten the corn cobs that was in the pig slop. But again, if you want to get an idea of that, think about what you feed your pet dog. But nobody would share anything. And so now comes inventory time. Remember the closet that you close the door, you don't want to see what's in it? The garage that's too full, the three drawers that I say, the next time I can't find something, I'm going to just start throwing stuff out until I find it. This brought this child to their senses, and they said, you know, all those farm hands back in Vidalia get to sit down to three meals a day, and they're warm, and I am here starving to death. And nobody likes me. Nobody will talk to me. And if you're in Atlanta or DeKalb County, there's no shelter for you unless it's below 35 degrees. I am going to go back to my parents and I am going to say to them that I have sinned against God and you and I don't deserve to be called your child. Take me on as a hired hand. And the child got up and went out into the middle of the connector, you know, the Grady Curve. Amen? I want you to picture this because what's coming next is really incredible for all of us. Because he got there and he's standing in the middle of the 7585 connector and down in Vidalia, while he was yet a long ways off, the parent saw him and with heart pounding, ran and embraced him. Hello, Vidalia to Atlanta, embraced. And the kid started to say, hey, I, you know the word. But here is the verse that I want you to hear out of this particular translation this morning, which is coming from the message. But the father, the parent, wasn't listening. Hello? We cannot receive any more important message from God. I don't know what it does to 2,000 years worth of confession, but it does tell me this, that at all costs, God wants to be in relationship with me. And if I would but just want to return, God will come find me and embrace me and call for a party. Brothers and sisters, that is my message to you to start this new year. While God was yet a long way off, God has seen you and has run to you and embraced you and is calling for the party to begin. God bless you. Amen.
Amen. I feel like everything that needs to be said today has been said, so I won't take too long with this. But one of my favorite things about this season of the year is the name Emmanuel, God with us. God with us, for us, around us. God came to earth in the form of a servant, in the form of a child, in the form of something so helpless to know us, how we feel and what we experience. God came to us in a way that we could understand for us and remains among us to this day. We are gathered here because God is still with us. As we go into this new year, may we always remember that if we just turn and ask, God is with us. God will run to us. God will find us wherever we are. God is with us in this place, in this body, wherever you are online, wherever you are in your life, and at this table. This is the table of God. It's not First Christian's table. It's not General Spirit's table. It is God's table, and everyone is welcome here. We take communion by intinction here, which means that you're going to grab a piece of bread, dip it in the cup, put it in your mouth, and then you swallow it. Um, if you are for any reason uncomfortable with that, we have personal communion cups, which are on the sides and in the back. Um, if you need someone to grab it for you, uh, just pop up a hand and we'll bring one to you. But no matter how you participate, everyone is invited to participate. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you now and ask that you would bless this bread, that we would remember that it was given to us to remind us of your unconditional love for us. We ask that you bless it so that we might gain strength from it. And Almighty God, we ask that you bless the cup the cup of the new covenant, the cup of which promise was made that we could never be separated from you. And bless the drinking of this cup, O God, that indeed we might treat each other with the same love that is given at this table from you to us. In Christ's name we pray. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
May we pray together again. God, our help, we thank you for this supper, shared in the spirit with your son, Jesus, who makes us new and strong, who brings us life eternal. We praise you for giving us all good gifts in him and pledge ourselves to serve you, even as in Christ you have served us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn on this day of hymns is number 167, Go Tell It on the Mountain. We will sing all verses of 167. Please stand if you are willing and able. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us in worship today. Thank you to Pastor Paul and Gentle Spirit for being with us. Thank you, Adam and William, for your gift of music, and uh, Reverend Phil Foster for the gift of your sonorous tones on the scriptures. Um, Happy New Year. We are released into the world to begin another year of loving one another, serving one another, and worshiping God together. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.